Hey, hey, Intuitive Soul Tribe. Mel, Intuitive Soul Coach here, excited to bring to you today's collective reading where we dive into the energy of what is being illuminated around this full moon in Virgo. So welcome back to my channel if you are returning and welcome if you're new. These are general readings. Please take what resonates and leave the rest behind. If you're interested in a personal reading, signing up for the monthly newsletter or entering into the free reading giveaway, you can find all of that information in the description box below the video, including the timestamps for each sign. All right, let's dive in here. Now this full moon in Virgo is illuminating the areas of our lives. And look at that, the areas of our lives that are toxic or unhealthy. And we have the devil card that just flipped out in the deck. So this is a really great time to clean it up. That's what this moon is all about. Virgo wants us to be healthy and focus on wellness and productivity. So this is a wonderful time to focus on what's no longer serving you. What area of your life could use a little bit of a cleanup. So let's dive in here. The cards are really wanting to come out here for you. So Aries. Now Aries, this full moon is highlighting your sixth house of organization, of efficiency, time management, justice showing up here. So where can you bring more balance into your life? Some of you Aries may be dealing with a legal situation, okay? There could be some sort of judgment that was put upon you or this can be karma as well. It's Libra and energy and Aries, Libra is your opposite and Aries and Libra are also in the north and south nodes. So you could be really focusing on relationships that may have felt one-sided for some of you. I also see here, Aries, that if you were treated unfairly or poorly, that's something you're letting go of because some of you may have been doing a lot of work in that area to heal from it, to move on from it, or to see why some sort of injustice or imbalance may have happened in your life. And look at that. We have the devil showing up again. So this devil showing up here for you, is all about taking a look at those habits, those patterns. Some of you, this does have to do with harsh judgments, even upon yourself. Aries, you can be really hard on yourself sometimes. So how can we organize our time more efficiently to bring more balance in? Now, this devil is also about addictions. It can be obsessions, manipulation, codependency, materialism. Some of you felt like you were being treated unfairly by someone who was manipulating you in some way, shape, or form, but with the devil showing up in reverse, you're freeing yourself from this, okay? This is really powerful. Some of you, this was a divorce, okay, with this justice energy here. This is about bringing truth, equality, and fairness back into your life. Okay, you have the star, you have three major arcanas. So this is a big full moon for you. Six could be significant with it landing in your sixth house. Some of you could be seeing sixes, six, six, six. Six could be your life path or a personal year that you are in, but you're healing from this. Now the star energy shows up typically after the tower. So for some of you, and the tower is Aries energy as well, for some of you, you are shattering an old belief system, one that kept you in a state of imbalance, okay? It may have even been a belief system because of going through some sort of divorce or going through a situation maybe with this devil energy, person, place, or thing, whatever this devil is for you, it'll be different for each of you. Whatever had tempted you or held you back on your path, right? Whatever wasn't serving you. I mean, it could be as simple as maybe scrolling social media for a couple hours a day where you could have used your time writing your book, right? It could be as large as a major addiction that had caused you and a spouse to divorce, right? It could be anything, but you have the star here. So this is a big energy of letting, letting that go, freeing yourself and bringing more balance into your world. So when the star shows up here, this is inspiration. This is hope. This is positivity. Spirit is saying here, don't give up on your dreams because I feel like there is some sort of positive turnout that had come from a difficult situation. One of my favorite quotes is turning pain into gain, right? Turning 
loss into some sort of beauty, right? Seeing the silver lining in a situation that was really holding you back or you felt attached to. Some of you may have even been stuck or felt like you had to stay in a situation because it was out of your control, right? So for example, let's say that, that there is a court date that you have to attend and you can't choose that court date, right? You can't choose the outcome of what happens that's up to the judge, that's up to the jury. There is an energy here of you trying to stay patient, but waiting for some sort of verdict, waiting for good karma, waiting for someone else to get their karma. It just feels at times like you've judged a situation harshly, harshly or you felt attached to a situation here, but I love that you're letting this go. So this is a powerful full moon for you here, Aries, and you're definitely getting efficient with bringing more balance, more truth, more commitment into your life. You're freeing yourself, shattering yourself from old beliefs. Well, not shattering yourself, but shattering the beliefs that's going to allow you to find more freedom. So that is what I have for you, Aries, with this full moon in Virgo. Let's move on to Taurus. Taurus, what do we have here for you with this Virgo full moon? So Taurus, this Virgo full moon lands in your fifth house of passion, playful energy, and it's a really great time to promote yourself as well in your business or if you are looking to date or get out there and just have a little bit of fun. That's what this full moon is all about for you. Yeah, look at that. We have lovers. So some of you, it is a relationship or it could be your career. You have the emperor showing up here in reverse. So the emperor in reverse is all about stepping into your your role, right? It's about you taking the lead. What is holding you back at this time? And that's what this moon is illuminating. It's illuminating any areas that are weighing upon you, such as, you know, a heavy burden that maybe you've been carrying for quite some time. And for some of you, this heavy burden could be work, okay? It could be with this Aries energy, someone who may have some sort of power over you in some way, or it feels that way, right? It could be someone of higher authority. It could be a father. It could be an Aries for some of you. But when this emperor shows up, this is structure, right? It's, it's structure. And some of you, you need to have a little bit of fun, Taurus, because maybe you've been too structured and that has been carrying a very heavy burden on you in some way, shape, or form, okay? Because... You're being guided here to open yourself up to new things, new beginnings with this Page of Swords. Pages are all about new beginnings. And when this Page of Swords shows up, he's ready for a new challenge, whether it's going back to school, learning something new, whether it is opening himself up and communicating with a lover or asking someone for support on how to build their dreams, right? So the Page of, of Swords isn't afraid to use their skills, their talents, which is their communication, their intellect, their mental mind as well, and to make wishes into, turn wish, wishes into reality because he's holding what I call, right? The dandelion is the wish flower. So he's holding some sort of wish in his hands, but it's up to you to go for it. So what's holding you back from getting that degree or having that conversation or using your mind to concoct those beautiful ideas that you have? But is there something that you've also haven't let go of? Because this can be the card of gossip. It can be about receiving difficult news. For some of you, maybe you... You failed some sort of certification or exam, or this could even stem back to your own father, and you may be holding some sort of judgment upon yourself, maybe even subconsciously, because the Ten of Wands says, you don't need to carry this any longer. Endings are bringing in new beginnings. So illuminate this full moon in Virgo is illuminating, you know, that structure, that stability, or some gossip, or negative news, or anything that may have weighed heavy upon you, it's time to release that and drop into the energy here of love. And I'm also getting with your fifth house of passion, you have the lovers here. So is there something that you need to address? Maybe it's couples counseling, right? Perhaps there's something within you that may be holding you back. 
you could really benefit from connecting with maybe a spiritual advisor, a healer, a shaman, a priest, a guru, whoever, right? It could even be a really good friend. But it's time for you to put a little bit of work into having fun, right? Having fun shouldn't be work, but Spirit is saying a lot of you, if you want to focus on your hobbies and your crafts, this is a really great time to do so. There is a seriousness here with this emperor in reverse. So it's time for you to take life a little less seriously, open your heart more, attend to relationships that may have been lacking, maybe lacking a little bit of love, right? Maybe spending more time with your kids or your grandchildren or your hobbies or whatever you want to put your heart and soul into. So this full moon in Virgo really highlights our Again, unhealthy habits or dynamics that aren't serving us. So if some of you have kept your, your heart on lockdown because you'd gone through maybe a narcissistic, manipulative relationship with this emperor in reverse, this is the time that you unload. Release those heavy burdens. Get them off your chest. Talk to someone. Work on that so you can allow yourself to have fun and enjoy life once again. All right, Taurus. That is what I have for you. Let's move on here to Gemini. Gemini, this Virgo full moon is highlighting your fourth house of domestic matters. So home life, family. Some of you could be contemplating a move. Okay, maybe you're thinking about moving. This can also be clearing up any miscommunications with a family or a lover or a spouse. This is a really great time to tidy up your space as well. Maybe this is a great moon for you to organize. Maybe you're doing some do-it-yourself projects around the house. Okay, communication showing up here. We have the Eight of Wands. Yeah, there may have been some sort of blocked communication that you had, Gemini, between you and someone close to you. And I feel like, yeah, because you have the Six of Cups, you have the Six of Wands, double six energy. This is a moon that can help you resolve some conflict, okay? Especially if you were dealing with maybe a Libra, a Taurus, or your own mother, or it could be female energy, possibly sister energy here. But let's dive in. Gemini, you have the Eight of Wands. It did show up a little bit sideways here. So I feel like there was a delay or maybe even a block in some sort of communication. This could be an argument with your spouse, a significant other, a child, where it just felt like they're showing me like, hitting a head against the wall, like you weren't getting anywhere with someone or it just felt like you may have been butting heads. This is a really good moon to clear the air, clean it up a little bit, maybe reach out. Apologies could be had at this time. This would be a really great moon to journal, okay, to journal Gemini, to put your feelings down on paper, to talk to someone, even if you have had an argument and maybe there is no communication between you and another person, how can you communicate? Because this full moon lands in Pisces season and it can really enhance our emotions and it's not good to suppress them. So this moon is highlighting any unhealthy patterns and that could include suppression of emotion or suppression of communication. Some of you may have felt Six of Wands energy. Maybe there was some sort of failure energy. Maybe you felt overlooked or shamed or humiliated in a dynamic that caused you to shut down emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, right? But the Six of Wands is saying that there's a comeback here. There is victory. There is achievement. And Gemini, I feel like you're going to get some sort of recognition if you haven't already where it's important that you feel heard. It's important that you do feel understood. And with the Eight of Wands, I just feel like there's some sort of cutoff that left you feeling less than. And it may have triggered some of your childhood wounds, okay? Maybe in your career, your boss or your coworkers weren't giving you credit. They weren't acknowledging your gifts and skills. Maybe they were kind of shunning you or pushing you aside and just not valuing your gifts and talents. If this is... Uh, health, I feel like it's important for you to open up the communication with your own body, right? What is your body trying to tell you? If there's a certain food that's affecting your gut, then 
maybe we should focus on eating a different food, right? So pay attention to the communication that you're receiving between you and your body, right? You and your higher self, you and others. What's the quality of your self-talk? Now, six of cups can be some past stuff, right? It can be past wounds, uh, childhood traumas as well, childhood wounding. This can be taking a look at the past. Some of you may be romanticizing a past out of loneliness that there could have been some sort of cutoff. If you are romanticizing a situation, it's important to remember the why. Maybe there was a lot of humiliation or shame. Now, some of you... There could even be a little bit of a fear of failure, right? A fear of failure where you want there to be success and you want to drive yourself towards success, but at the expense of what cost, right? Don't, don't drain your own self. If something is unhealthy, work through the emotions, work through the feelings so they don't keep coming up in your life, Gemini, because the six of cups is the card of nostalgia, right? Sometimes we can sit in past energy and we can sit in it and we can, you know, really feel heavy emotions or triggers or wounds, or we just get lost there. And it actually, it causes us to lose precious time of what's right here, what's right now. And you're growing something. Some of you, this could be a childhood dream that you've always wanted to grow, but maybe you weren't quite sure how to. Maybe you weren't sure how to be successful in this childhood dream or in a relationship that you've been in for quite some time because this can be past life energy. But you have the Empress as your outcome here, Gemini. This Empress, again, is a Libran Taurus energy, and it's all about creation, fertility, what you want to grow, what you want to birth into the world. Maybe it has to do with, again, mother energy, maternal energy here as well. But this empress is all about creativity. She's very uh, sexy. She's nurturing. She's growing. She is constantly bringing in the energy of abundance when she focuses on filling her cup first. And that may be something that's being illuminated here for you, Gemini, is filling your cup first because the, then the rest of this flows. And sometimes when we're focusing so far on the past, we kind of drain what's in our cup. We drain it towards the past energies. And I feel like you being in the here and the now and maybe taking action on something that maybe it's coming up from the past, but you're taking action on it. So you're not sitting ruminating in something, you're doing something about it. And I feel like it's actually gonna put you in a position here of a lot of abundance. All right, Gemini. Now let's take a look at Cancer. Cancer, what does this full moon in Virgo have showing up for you? What's being illuminated here? Now this moon Cancer is highlighting your third house of community. So soul tribe could be showing up for you. Meeting new people, networking in your career, putting yourself out there. Some sort of expansion is really showing up here, Cancer, in a big way. So what do we have for you? Ace of Cups could be love. It could be a focus on self-love, but also putting you out there in a way that allows you to be seen and you to feel loved and heard as well, because this is a love connection. It can be the gift of love. It can be overflowing emotion as well. In Cancer, we are in Pisces season, which is your fellow water sign. So you may be feeling very heavy on the emotions as well. So go for something. If you love art, right? Go to that art museum. If you love cooking or baking, sign up for that class. Get out of your comfort zone and join the community because you may be surprised at maybe a new person that you meet, especially if you're looking for love, or it may surprise you how much you really enjoy doing something. So even if it's taking a class and you're like, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll really like that, I think that if you step out of your comfort zone and you just go for it, you may realize that you really, really enjoy doing something new or you may really enjoy someone's company with this Ace of Cups. Uh, this can also be about filling your own cup and talking to someone as well, okay? Again, community. So even if that's talking to someone about your crafts, and you have the Eight of Pentacles here, which is about mastering your craft. 
So a lot of you, there is a new beginning coming in here as most full moons bring in a new beginning. And this is about highlighting your hobbies, your goals. For some of you, this is very fortuitous if you are a teacher, if you are an educator of some sort, if you are in the art, the design, the music industry, or any hobby or craft that really stems from a place of heartfelt energy, right? It just feels like passion, right? And there's a lot of passion in the air here for you as well. So there could be group events. Uh, maybe you're getting out with your guy friends or your girlfriends. You could be traveling with them. You may meet someone if you're looking for love while you are in a group setting. I definitely see you getting out of your comfort zone and really feeling an intense variety of emotions. Everything from joy to extreme happiness, but it sometimes can flip that other, you know, to the other end and highlight some intense emotions of maybe jealousy or insecurities as well. So just be mindful, Cancer, of, you know, the, the energies that are showing up for you because you're still processing and you're still going through a little bit of healing. You have the Four of Swords in reverse. So try not to overwork yourself, okay? That's being illuminated here. Have a little fun. Open your heart up. Have fun. If you're overworking, overthinking, obsessing about an energy, that could be illuminating for you in this Virgo full moon. So whatever you've been really focusing intently on, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But if it's exhausting you or if it's becoming an obsession, if it's digging or dipping itself into that devil energy, right? Which remember, this Virgo moon is highlighting our unhealthy habits and patterns. If it is getting to the point where something is unhealthy, workaholism, maybe it's dipping into your rest, right? Maybe it's affecting your relationships, your love life, your intimate life, whatever this may be for you, it's time to address that and have this new beginning. All right, let's look at an outcome card for you here, Ari, or excuse me, Cancer. Community, all right. Could be community projects as well. It could be collaborating with people that you work with. I just see here focusing on, you know, a craft or something that you really enjoy. Someone could also be going to a bookstore, purchasing some new books. They just showed me that for you as well. But you're finishing up a cycle here with the world card. This is the card of completion. Some of you could also be traveling, but the world is your oyster. And that's what this moon is, is reminding you. The world is your oyster. How can you serve your community? Some of you may be influencers. You may work in you know, international sales or a global energy here. But this world is about victory. It's about rewards and celebrations. So you're going to feel this sense of wholeness and fulfillment where you're able to have this new beginning in maybe a new career path or a new craft or you've healed something that may have been mentally overstimulating you and you're finally completing up a big cycle with the world. So I'm loving this for you, Cancer. Get out there, have a little bit of fun, celebrate, spend time with your community and let your hair down. All right, Leo, what do we have here for Leo? Full moon in Virgo. Now, Leo, this full moon highlights your second house of money. Oh, and then we have the five of pentacles. So for some of you Virgos out there, or excuse me, Leos out there, you have been working on your finances. You've been working on your materialism, material wealth. There could have been some health issues. Some of you may have been fired. Maybe you were let go or maybe you weren't feeling appreciated for what you are putting out into the world, okay? Five of pentacles here, five of pentacles. It almost seems like it got a little bit as I was shuffling there, it's almost like it felt a little bit heavy. So some of you may have felt like the bills were stacking up or it just felt heavy within the energy. And that could have been affecting your family life. Okay, maybe your partner, if you are in a partnership uh, or if you have children, maybe you were funding their, their college or maybe a partner had shifted jobs. Some of you had to take care of a sick loved one as well. But with the five of pentacles in reverse here, Leo, I definitely feel like you are taking a look or need to focus on taking a look at finances. That's what this moon is illuminating for you. Finances and money and taking a look also at 
where you're spending your money. Now I am getting here unnecessary spends. Now, of course, there are certain indulgence, indulgences and pleasures that, that we want to partake in. Maybe it's your Starbucks coffee or maybe it's that, you know, that pastry that you buy in the morning, whatever it may be. But I feel like some of you are needing to maybe write down your expenses or you may be looking at uh, what you spend your money on and maybe you're getting rid of that subscription that you don't use very often or you you feel like you thought you would save more money having that Costco membership but you're really not because you're not shopping there or whatever it may be you're looking at those things yeah four of pentacles anything that is felt like it was locked up here okay because you have the four and the five of pentacles which is the material realm and that's what's being highlighted your second house of you know money finances. So what have you been kind of keeping a lockdown on? Because some of you felt like you were left out in the cold. I also see some of you were stressed around money because you have the six of pentacles in reverse. It is showing up here as an uneven exchange. Okay. Uh, it could be that this is the time you go in and ask for that raise, Leo. This is where you promote your business. You put yourself out there. You maybe raise your prices. Self-worth equals net worth. And I feel like you are doing what you can to increase your finances and come to a better place. Now, of course, this may have to do with beliefs around family. Okay, family traditions. You may want to take a deep dive into your belief system about how you grew up. Did you grow up poor? Did you grow up feeling like money was the root of all evil? Did you grow up, you know, with an overabundance of money, but you didn't quite know what to do with it? So really taking a look at what is the energy exchange that you have with your money? Uh, now, if that's not an issue here or a concern, but we do see it showing up multiple times, some of you, this could be about rent. It could be about mortgage as well, 10 of cups, four of wands. It could be about, you know, paying for things around the house. Some of you may have had an unexpected expense, Leo, maybe a washer or a dryer, okay? It could have been a hot water heater. I feel like some of you, there was some type of an, an expense that maybe you have to rebuild up after, but I feel like you're, you're healing from it. Because you do have the three of swords, which is, you know, financial freedom when it's showing up. It can't even be something that was really weighing heavy on your mind. It caused a lot of anxiety. It caused a lot of stress. For some of you, this is a divorce or a family dy dynamic that you went through. Some of you may even be in a relationship and you may be codependent. Right, because that Virgo moon, Leo, is highlighting the unhealthy habits. So maybe someone could be codependent and it's breaking their heart to stay where they're at, but they can't find another place to live or they, they don't have the money to kind of get up out of a situation. Let's take a look at the outcome. What's the outcome here? I mean, the good news is you have the 10 of cups. So there is some sort of support or help or community or resources available to you. Four of wands. I do feel like there can be balance here with this four of wands. This is about celebration. Some of you could even be traveling. I mean, you're worried about, maybe you're saving up for travel, but you're worried, is this going to go effectively or is there going to be reciprocity here? And I feel like the answer is yes, because I am getting freedom. That's what this moon is highlighting for you. How can you be more effective and efficient with your money and with your time as well? What's the outcome here for Leo, please? What's the outcome for Leo? Thank you. All right, King of Cups in the upright. This is good because we are in Pisces season. Uh, some of you are taking a look at the structures. The emperor showing up here in reverse is, is learning to question the structure, the status quo. This can be about leadership, asking maybe a leader, and maybe you have asked a boss or you, this could be a spouse, it could be a father. Perhaps there is someone here that you weren't able to necessarily work out some sort of compromise, but I feel like you're going to move on to something that suits you better. You have the chariot here heading towards the king of cups. So you're not letting 
maybe some narcissism or manipulation, control, someone's power play, someone's power trip, right? Someone could be having a little bit of a power trip here saying, no, that's my money or, you know, I have this, I don't want to share it because someone could be sitting on a bucket of wealth, but just not what willing or wanting to share it. Some of you, there could have been inheritance or something that felt challenging between siblings or between family when it comes to maybe again an inheritance or family heirloom. But the good news is you're moving on from that. Whatever this emperor in reverse is for you, which we just talked about, maybe something that was controlling or just felt like it was holding you back. Chariot says, uh-uh, I'm moving on from it. I'm heading towards calmer waters and I'm not gonna let my emotions get the best of me. So I like this energy. You're coming into a better position here with your finances and maybe even with family members as well. All right, Virgo. What do we have here for Virgo? Now, full moon in Virgo. It's in your sign, in your first house. So this is about owning your glory, right? This is about you being in the spotlight when it comes to your gifts and your skills and your talents. So Virgo, what is being illuminated here for you? A new beginning. Yep. This is one energy, uh, well, I mean, it's zero, but the first house illuminated for you is about manifesting a new beginning, right? And it's about you being able to go forward. This is spontaneity, right? The fool is all about our true inner self. It's our soul self. And you're being guided here to let go of the past, right? You're being guided to let go of what no longer serves you, whether it's some heavy emotions that you've been carrying because you have the five of cups in reverse with the king of cups, both emotion cards, and we have the king of cups here as well. Now, this full moon lands in, yes, it's in Virgo, but it lands in Pisces season and Pisces is a watery sign. So you are letting go of some sort of energy from the past and you're saying, you know, I've sat in that energy. I've mourned. I went through a loss. I was betrayed. Maybe there was a broken heart or some sort of disappointment. Okay. But I have sat in it enough where I've learned to either forgive myself or I've allowed myself to heal, but I'm not going to sit in it for the rest of my life. King of Cup says, I've learned what I've needed to learn and I've emotionally matured from that situation. Wow. Look at that. You have the King of Cups showing up twice. King of Cups showing up twice. How is that possible? You may be asking. Well, in uh, Katrin Welt signs uh, mystical moments, right? Um, she puts out two versions of the kings, including the emperor, and you have both of them masculine and feminine. So this is a really big time here for you, Virgo, to balance up your masculine and your feminine and own your emotions, own your past right? It's about having a new beginning and not letting that past hold you back any longer from what you truly seek and desire. Now you're going to have some choices showing up here in the near future with the two of swords, but I feel like you're being guided to drop into your heart center instead of thinking or overthinking a situation or letting the beliefs or the thoughts of the past creep in. You're being guided to use your intellect in a positive way but to drop to your heart center, what feels best for you? What intuitively is guiding you moving forward? Because sometimes that two of swords is an energy of needing to make a decision, right? Being at that crossroads. And I feel like some of you, you didn't know what to do because your head was pulling you in one direction and your heart in another. Let's, let's break apart this uh, two of swords. What is this choice or this decision all about? And what will be the outcome? What's the choice or decision? Oh, walking away. Should I stay or should I go now, right? Eight of cups is about walking towards your nine of cups. But sometimes it can feel like abandonment, right? Sometimes it can wear a pretty little pink bow. Not really, but sometimes it feels like you've been abandoned. It can bring up some abandonment or rejection wounds of the past. But I feel like you're not looking back, right? You see here that it may have to do with pairing up or being coupled. Uh, it could be partnerships of some sort, whether in career, in an organization, in love, in family. Because you see that there are swans there partnered, there's dragonflies, butterflies, and you actually see the moon hidden in the background. So I feel like in order for you to partner up 
with something Leo that is in, or excuse me, Virgo that is in your highest good, you got to own up to your glory and what you're worth and what you're truly made of and take a leap of faith. That's why you have the fool card. Now the eight of cups is walking away from something or someone. It's also my eat, pray, love card. For those of you that are familiar with that movie or that book and walking away from something that may look good on paper, but does it feel good? That's why it's cup energy. Does it feel good to you? It doesn't matter what it looks like to everyone else because it matters what you feel on the inside because at the end of the day, you are with you, right? And if it doesn't feel good, what are you doing? And that's something you've been contemplating and going back and forth with. So let's see what's coming in when you walk towards your nine of cups. What's the outcome here? Ace of wands, beautiful new beginning here. Look at that. This is about you chasing your dreams. This is passion. This is desire. This is inspiration. It's reinventing yourself from the inside out here, Virgo. This is owning your glory and a lot of growth. If you are brave enough, which you are, to let something of the past go and walk towards your enriching, beautiful future. Oh, I love this for you. All right, Virgo, definitely highlighting your first house. Now, Libra, what's going on for you, Libra? Highlighting your 12th house of endings. Could be in love. Okay, Queen of Cups. So, Libra. This full moon in Virgo is highlighting your 12th house. So endings bringing in new beginnings. Some of you, it's an end to some emotions where maybe you were overly emotional and it doesn't mean that that's a, a wrong, you know, I feel like there was a situation that caused for your emotions to get real big, right? Real big Libra. And you may have had to focus on that area of self healing, filling your own cup after maybe some sort of conflict, five of wands in reverse. We have the seven of pentacles. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah. Some of you put a lot of time and a lot of energy into a situation and it, it did bring about a lot of emotions for you, but also a lot of conflict. So what is this full moon illuminating for you with this queen of cups? It is illuminating you filling your own cup first, taking a look at your self care because Libra Queen of Cups energy is someone who gives great advice. She gives great support. She's extremely intuitive. She can have maybe some strong water placements in her chart as well. And this is Pisces season. So your emotions could have an extra edge to them. But I feel like you're letting go of some sort of emotion that was causing you to have either conflict with another or even conflict within yourself. Five of wands. This can be about feelings of criticism even. Maybe competition within yourself or within another. Libra, this is about collaboration. It is about finding ways to come together in a sense if you're able to or if you're wanting to. Maybe this is a work environment setting. Maybe it's with your own children. Some emotions could have got heated here. How can you bring that back into balance, right? So when this five of wands shows up, there was some sort of competitiveness, obstacle, different, completely different opinions that someone had had here, or just a lack of leadership, a lack of someone knowing what move to make. And it's almost as if someone kept making the wrong move based on a, a heaviness of emotion. Someone you were dealing with or you yourself just felt like you kind of were indecisive, right? You wanted to make a move and you would make it and then you're like, no, I don't think I want to make that move. And it just feels very wishy-washy within someone else's energy and maybe that affected you. But you're moving on from that. Endings bringing in new beginnings. And the chariot here is saying that you've completed a big cycle. Libra, this is the energy of triumphant success. It's about being able to move forward in victory because a lot of you are stuck in that indecisiveness or you were stuck in some sort of conflict and the emotions were starting to really weigh on you in a way that it just didn't feel good. Some of you may have even felt like you've hit some sort of a rock bottom, but you are moving towards putting your energy and your time and effort maybe into things that 
excite you, that fill your cup. And the reason why I see this was so difficult for you in the past or within your emotions is because you've put a lot of your time and your heart and your soul and your blood and your sweat and your tears into either a relationship or a project or your career or whatever this is here, you've put and invested yourself and your soul into this. And that's why it was difficult for you to maybe move forward and you've stayed in that situation. All right, let's get an outcome energy here for Libra. Endings bringing in new beginnings. Yeah, for those of you that felt a little bit stuck, this full moon is going to shake things up for you to gain a new perspective in order to move forward. And what are you moving forward in? Because we have the hanged man. Definitely new perspectives coming in here. What are you going to move forward in? The Six of Pentacles. Re uh, reciprocity. Relationships that are... To, you know, both, both of you putting in the energy the same. This is going to be partnerships that feel balanced. This is going to be family dynamics that feel more harmonized. Beautiful energy here. And if you cannot clear the air or if it feels like something is irreparable, you have a new beginning here. And for a lot of you, because this is major endings, you are letting go of something in a big way, Libra. And what you are manifesting out of letting go is something that aligns more with what you want. This can be a gift as well. It can be unexpected resources coming in for you. It could be an unexpected friend. It could be a gift of money, right? Uh, the Six of Pentacles is also a gift, donation, uh, generosity, someone being very generous with their time, with their money, but it's going to bring in some sort of balance. It could be a good partnership where both of you are matching up, both of you are aligned in some way, shape, or form. This is really a beautiful energy to go into. They're saying, look at the bottom of the deck, subconscious bottom, look at that. Ace of Wands, beautiful, there's your new beginning. So definitely heading towards um, more equal give and take here, Libra. More, I just heard more bang for your buck as well. Okay, whatever that is for you. Uh, some of you, there could be more money coming in here. So a, a big ending that you've had a difficult time emotionally kind of shutting out is coming to a completion or a close and you're moving on. Could be travel for some of you or a move as well. All right, Scorpio. Scorpio, this full moon is highlighting your 11th house of networking, collaboration, right? Putting yourself out there in some way, shape, or form. So Scorpio, we have the queen of pentacles showing up here. Some of you, I'm getting real estate. Maybe you are a real estate broker or agent. Maybe you're looking to buy real estate or it could be about changing up the home environment or your home life. And maybe you want to collaborate with an interior decorator, or you're wanting to host a party or a game night at your house. A judgment call is being made here. I mean, you have the judgment. This is a big energy around second chances as well. So Scorpio, your 11th house is really taking a look at maybe some things that have been weighing heavy on your heart or your emotions with the Four of Cups. You've been putting a lot of time and energy into a situation, into yourself is what I'm hearing. What's the outcome for Scorpio? The lovers. It could be a relationship or a passion project, something of the heart. But starting off here, you have the Queen of Pentacles. Some of you may have felt like a homebody lately. Maybe you've spent a lot of time at home. Some of you work from home. I feel like this full moon is really highlighting you getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of the house, spending time with friends, going on a play date, meeting up with a girlfriend or you know a family member for coffee, asking that person out on a date, spending some time with your spouse or significant other instead of just the responsibilities and daily duties of what's going on within the home. So Scorpio, getting out of the house is a big thing for you. And now, of course, we, we love to be in our house houses. I love to be in my house. But sometimes we get that little pep to our step and we are being guided to open up, meet new people. The universe has resources and wants you to be abundant. So I feel like if you have some sort of internal push to put yourself out there in some way, shape, or form, Spirit is saying, do it here. Because the Queen of Pentacles is very resourceful. She's very abundant. She's very homey, practical, down to earth. It could even be inviting people into your home, 
right? I could be hosting. I'm getting foreign exchange, okay? That's pretty specific. Some of you could be hosting maybe a foreign exchange student or you could be getting a new uh, pet, bringing a new pet into the family here. Uh, some of you, I mean, there could even be a new addition to the family that allows you to extend and collaborate and to put yourself, uh, you know, in a, a family setting. Family reunion could be showing up here or a birthday party, some sort of celebration here for you. Now, I do get with the five of wands showing up here, there was some sort of rivalry. There was some sort of conflict that you either had within yourself or within a friendship, within a family member, or within a love dynamic with the lovers that caused you to kind of hermit, caused you, Scorpio, to just kind of hole up. But someone may be wanting a second chance or the universe wants you to have a second chance at love or at life or at freedom or whatever this is for you with the judgment. But this is coming in hot. This is coming in quick. So this full moon in Virgo, right? I feel between now and the next full moon, there's going to be a judgment call made for you. This is your energy, Scorpio. It's about your purpose. It's changing your life for the better. And a lot of you, this is letting go of regrets. And it's also about letting go of karma. Some sort of karma has maybe taken place in this conflict or in a situation that you are going through and you've maybe grieved a loss of a situation or it was a challenging karmic cycle or experience that you've gone through, especially if this was a relationship or if it was a twin flame or soulmate for some of you, because you put so much time and energy and effort into a situation here and maybe you are giving yourself a second chance at life. Whatever that may look like, whether it is with a person, whether it's rebuilding on a dream that you've had for yourself and saying, I'm not going to let the past get in my way or affect me, right? Forgiveness is necessary here in order to move forward. And I feel like this full moon in, in Virgo is really highlighting the past in order to release it because again, your 11th house is about putting yourself out there, even if it feels uncomfortable, because sometimes we stay in our comfort zone because it feels safe, but we don't always grow within that safety net, right? You're being asked to expand, expand consciousness, expand relationships, expand your, your wealth, your portfolio, whatever it may be, because you have some really beautiful gifts coming in here. Now, of course, the lover showing up in reverse can be making a choice that is more balanced for you in matters of the heart, right? What feels good? And we are in Pisces season, Scorpio, your fellow water sign. And so you may be feeling heavy on the emotions, but I do see here that there's going to be a second chance for you to find balance and trust that your intellect and trust that your beautiful heart, but most importantly, that your soul is going to guide you forward towards having a better life, creating a life that you love and letting go of karma, letting go of guilt, letting go of resentment and regrets, because that's a big part of this moon for you. All right. That's what I have for you, Scorpio. Let's look at your energy, Sagittarius. What do we have for Sag? Sagittarius, 10 of cups right away here. Now, Sagittarius, this full moon in Virgo is highlighting your 10th house of career. Some of you may even work from home. You may be looking into retirement. You may be looking into IRAs, college funds, taxes, anything that has to do with your career, maybe even making a big move, but you're wondering how is that going to affect family? Okay, some of you, this could have been an inheritance. Some of you may have even been gifted a sum of money. Okay, the emperor showing up here. The emperor showing up is saying that you're learning to question your career. And maybe some of you have went to a boss or you are a business owner or an entrepreneur yourself. The emperor showing up in reverse is all about stability. It is structure. It is uh, leadership. And I feel with this Aries energy showing up, we have Aries in the North Node right now. And for you, Sagittarius, it's it's how can you step into your power? How can you take the lead in 
an area of your life, specifically for a lot of you, it's career because that's what this full moon is highlighting in order to bring in more success and more abundance. Your outcome energy is the six of wands. The six of wands for you, Sagittarius, is success, right? It's accomplishment, achievement, fame, victory. It's being able to maybe even step out into some sort of spotlight and be recognized by, by the public or be recon being recognized by the people that you work with. And I feel like there has been some sort of loss um, emotionally, maybe in your personal life or at work where it caused you to kind of focus on that loss and you may have had to kind of put your dreams on hold okay some of you this could have been a loss within the family or a divorce may have set you back uh, when it comes to career some of you may even be some sort of marriage counselor or you may work in a family dynamic family setting you help families Maybe you were saving for a family trip as well. There could be something with paternal or father energy here, Sagittarius. But with this five of cups, it's really illuminating to focus on the present, what you have right here, right now, and to raise your vibrations to attract what you want by feeling it right now. Because what you're feeling is some sort of lack of. You're feeling some sort of loss. So are you focused on the... The loss or you focus on the gain and I feel like that's what this moon is highlighting for you now this moon is about getting back to basics as well cleaning it up so taking a look at your career maybe even updating your resume right going from the old to the new and so you're taking a look at ways to improve right improve your your finances improve maybe your relationships or your family life so if there's something underneath the surface which you can see here that these two two people underneath the surface she they have you know they have they they don't have human feet underneath there and i feel like there is something you are addressing below the surface and it could be deep within your emotions so really take a look at your belief system as well maybe around money okay or around self-worth self-worth equals net worth it's a really great book by nancy levin uh, some of you may be looking at where you are valued and where you know people may not value you as much and i feel like that's what you're wanting to kind of shift at this time so sagittarius let's take a look at the outcome four of wands this is about a goal a, i just heard a golden opportunity but also goal goal oriented energy here so goals there could be a golden opportunity in a goal uh with this four of wands this can be 11 11 energy it can be hitting some sort of milestone or celebratory uh you know yes i got that promotion or i got that job i i got that home or we're able to travel we're able to visit family i haven't seen family for some time i haven't seen that person since you know that loss that we went through or this person was really sick and i wasn't able to get to them i feel like there is oh okay for some of you this isn't going to resonate with every one of you but someone some of you may have had a father who was very sick now, I don't know if they're still uh, here or not, but there could have been a lot of a loss around a father dynamic. And uh, maybe there was, there was uh, someone had missed out on maybe a marriage, okay, because they had crossed over. But I, the message I'm getting here is they did watch you build this life for yourself. They're very proud of you, okay? That's specific for some of you. If this is a parent who's crossed over or someone who wasn't able to watch some sort of milestone or achievement, they saw it. Okay, very specific there. All right, let's move on to Capricorn. What do we have here for Capricorn? Now, Capricorn, this is a very important moon for you. Now, this lands in your ninth house, which is all about self-care. It's about recharging your batteries. So Capricorn, if you have been overworking, overthinking, yeah, 10 of Pentacles in reverse, if there's been a maybe neglect of family or some family drama that has to do around maybe money, because this can be the Wall Street card as well. So finances, I definitely feel that you are a go-getter, Capricorn, but if you have been exhausting yourself to the point of feeling depleted energetically or feeling depleted in any area of your life for that matter this moon is highlighting your downtime it's saying 
recharge your batteries. Do what you need to do here, Capricorn, to be all that you can be. But in order to be all that you can be, you need to rest. It's just like you know, refueling, think about that race car going around the race track. They need to go in for a pit stop. And even though they wanna keep up, right? They wanna be able to have that momentum and feel good. In order to do that, in order to keep that car running smooth and efficiently, they have to take that pit stop and check the tires and they have a team there, right? To be able to see what maybe the driver can't necessarily see. So some of you, yeah, Knight of Swords in reverse. Some of you, it may be important to communicate, take action, talk to someone, or just tell everyone, put up your hand and say, I just need some me time right now. For those of you Capricorns who are people pleasers, this is a really big time for you as well. Page of Swords. You have the Knight of Swords, the Page of Swords. So yeah, a lot of you are really overthinking. And now we have the Queen of Swords. Look at all this mental energy. Yeah, obsession or again, overanalyzing, overthinking things. Slow it down with the Eight of Wands in, it's almost sideways position coming out. Put a little bit of a pause or a little bit of a delay. We don't have to constantly be productive. You know, and being productive internally is just as important, right? Being productive, what I mean by that is taking care of you. So yes, you have dreams, you have goals, you have aspirations when it comes to your money, when it comes to your legacy. Ten of Pentacles is beautiful. It's about your investments and it's about, you know, taking a look at where your money is going and your career and family traditions. Ten of Pentacles is really beautiful to have, right? But it is showing up in reverse. So is there something that could be exhausting you? whether it's debt, right? It could be family drama. It could be wanting to build your legacy, but it just feels like you are spread too thin. That's what you are addressing during this moon, okay? Because the Knight of Swords can be a very impulsive energy. It can be very quick moving, right? Knight of Swords, but you have three of them. You have the page, which says, slow down the action, Maybe uh, do a little bit of research or focus on something that is a wish for you because this is my wishing flower with this Knight of Swords, or excuse me, Page of Swords. Some of you, maybe you've been really studying very hard for an exam or you've been uh, doing taxes or some sort of mental job or you've been thinking about something that's utilized a lot of that mental capacity but you have graduated in a sense because you're going from taking action on something to you know f having that wish fulfilled because you thought something through, you took the action on it. Now celebrate your success. I kind of get that energy for you, Capricorn. Celebrate some sort of victory or success. Now you can see with this Queen of Swords that she has a vision. She has that uh, you know, that scope there in her eye and she can see the future beyond the eye can see. And I feel like you hold something very powerful within you where you are set up for success, Capricorn. But in order to get there, it's almost like pause, reevaluate, really reassess, don't overthink, but use your intellect, use your logic in a really powerful way. Learn about what you do not know. Some of you are learning about finances or you're going back to school here to better yourself, to increase your career. Now with this eight of wands, I feel like you could even be waiting on some sort of communication when it does come to your legacy or your career, your money, your family, whatever this 10 of pentacles is for you. I feel like you're wanting to have some sort of feedback, but it feels like there was a delay. And I feel like that delay, it's almost as if it was a much needed delay. And some of you may, you may get triggered by that. Maybe you're thinking, Melissa, it wasn't a needed delay. I really wanted to, you know, move forward. But with that Knight of Swords in reverse, it's almost like you couldn't see something that the universe could. Spirit has better plans for you here. Let's take a look at the outcome. What do we have, please? Queen of Cups, yeah. So you're going from that Queen of Swords to that Queen of Cups energy, and it's for you to drop into more of your heart-based energy. It could be nurturing, caring, intuitive abilities as well. The Queen of Cups is highly intuitive, and so is the Queen of Swords, but it's finding that balance between the head and the heart. 
okay? And some of you may have just mo been moving forward on intellect and you know, that's okay. But we need to also drop down to our heart center and uh, really make some decisions that feel more balanced. And I feel like that's why there was some sort of pause or some sort of delay in your world here, Capricorn. All right, let's take a look at Aquarius. What do we have, please, for Aquarius? What's this full moon in Virgo highlighting Aquarius? Your emotions. Now, this is your eighth house of getting deep right? And, and it's partnered up with the Pisces energy. So this is a really good time to focus on some deep emotions that maybe you've blocked or went cold on because you have the four of cups and the queen of swords in reverse. So yeah, you've gone cold to a situation. Some of you've numbed a situation. Okay. Yeah. Five of swords. It was too difficult for you to deal with. And it's like, she's holding that heart in her hand there and the heart's been kind of ripped out. So some of you, it almost feels like you've been let down here. And instead of maybe dealing with it in a healthy way, and I say that in the kindest manner here, Aquarius, in the healthiest way. And some of you maybe, I mean, that's how you, we process. That's how we deal with things. There's no you know, I'm not judging, not pointing a finger. Some of you may have dealt with something by overeating. Maybe you drank too much, right? Maybe you've numbed your emotions. Maybe you just don't want to deal with them. Some of you Aquarians, maybe you try to think through your emotions, but this is a really powerful time for you to say, okay, what do I truly need to heal? What's the big trigger here with this queen, uh, with the four of swords? And let's get an outcome here for Aquarius, please. Outcome. Three of Wands, moving on, moving forward, yeah. So we start off here with this moon reflecting your eighth house of, again, emotions, intensity. It could be even, it could be a sexual energy as well for some of you, intimacy, right? So it could be healing your relationship with intimate dynamics, intimate relationships, which can also be trust, right? Uh, and it's hard to find that intimacy within and without when there's not trust. So some of you with this queen of swords have went cold or maybe someone went cold to you and four of cups caused a lot of uh, maybe even depression for some of you. Maybe you got kind of caught up in some sort of self, self reflection or that's what you're needing to do at this time is just reflect a little bit on what you'd went cold on with this queen of swords. Uh, she can be very sharp. Uh, she can be very straight to the point. But when she's in reverse here, she can go cold on a situation. Especially if someone's done her dirty with the Queen of Swords, she'll just cut you out and say, nope, I'm not dealing with it. She can be very blunt, very raw, and very uh, cold with her emotions. And it may even feel like she lacks emotions here. So Aquarius, not that you don't have emotions because you do. We all do. But you're also not going to put up with BS but I feel that sometimes because those feelings are so heavy and you don't quite know what to do with them, at times being an air sign, you try to think through your emotions. That's what this moon is highlighting for you. It's highlighting the five of swords. So we have here uh, double fours, right? We have a lot of the threes, fours, fives. So you are being guided to take a look at some things because Spirit wants you to live your best life. Your higher self wants you to live your love, your best life. So if there are any shadows below the surface, if there are any subconscious energies that are happening here for you, I feel like this is a really great time to address them because this five of swords, maybe someone wanted to win at all costs. Maybe there was a lot of arguments, a lot of conflict, a lot of back and forth here. Uh, someone feels like you could have ripped their heart out or someone feels like you, you didn't care about them, but I feel like you did but you also needed to choose you it's like you needed to choose your worth and you spread yourself too thin or you gave someone chance after chance here okay or this was in a work setting where you just felt like you weren't being acknowledged and you started to go numb after a period of time and what you once loved or put your heart and soul into it got repetitive or it got maybe a little bit boring uh, but the four of swords says you're healing and you have been doing the work Aquarius, your guides are very proud of you here with the Four of Swords because this is rest and retreat. It's taking a look at your emotions and saying, what have I been overthinking? What have I been obsessing about? What have I been ignoring the signs? 
that's what's showing up for you. And it's not a bad thing. It's leading you towards something better. And what the, what is that something better? The three of wands, right? It's leading you to see your ships coming in. It's leading you towards more passion, more intimacy, more abundance, more success. I mean, the three of wands is a beautiful energy of a return on your investment. So if you put a little bit of time into your self-healing, which I see you are doing or you have been doing or you will do, there will be a big investment or a big reward that comes out of it. Let's take a look and clarify here. What's going, where, where are we going with this three of wands? Where are we going here for Aquarius? All right, death, death card. Yeah, you're going to let it go. You're going to finally be able to transmute and transform that energy. You're going to turn that pain into gain. This is beautiful. This is big. This is transformative, Aquarius. So yeah, whatever you'd gone through here in the past, you're definitely turning that pain into gain and you're going to move on from it and you're going to be a better version of you, Aquarius, because you had gone through that situation. All right, let's take a look here at Pisces. Pisces, this full moon in Virgo is highlighting your seventh house and it's also Pisces season. Happy birthday. It is highlighting your house of partnerships. Okay. So partnerships show up in all forms. Oh, we have the death card that just flipped over. Some of you, you may be putting an end to a, a partnership or you are transferring forming that partnership in some way or another. Yeah, seven of swords. This is honesty with yourself, okay? And some of you getting honest with yourself may mean that you are recognizing that a relationship has had a turning point in your life. Maybe this is a relationship with a spouse, with a, a family member, with a friend, with a coworker. But the seven of swords can be that you've been betrayed, right? You've gone through a situation where, yeah, there was some sort of betrayal, or maybe you didn't want to look at a situation because you were afraid of, of where it would go or how it would transform. And sometimes we stay in a comfort zone, even if it's uncomfortable. But the death is saying here, the time has come, right? We can't hang on any longer. We can't resist the change because it's here, right here, right now. And maybe it's your, you know, your birthday that is really highlighting this as well. Uh, it could be that you're realizing who's truly in your corner and who's not. For those of you that are single, I feel like you are changing the way that you view certain things. You're releasing some heavy burdens and you have double endings showing up here. I mean, you have the death card, you have the 10 of wands. So if you are in any sort of partnership or dynamic that feels too heavy, and you've been trying to hold it up for the sake of maybe you feel indebted, maybe you feel like you're stuck, maybe you feel like you owe it, or maybe you tried to work on healing or mending. I just feel like you're releasing some sort of burden that you've been carrying for quite some time. And some sort of partnership here in your life or a situation that has been heavy, you're getting honest with yourself and you're saying, okay, I see that I'm no longer the person that I was, or I'm no longer in that relationship that I, th I thought I was. And what's happening here is you're actually coming out into a favorable new position here with this five of pentacles, because some of you felt left out in the cold. But when the five of pentacles is showing up here, I feel like you are making changes where you're no longer gonna feel that heavy burden of maybe abandonment or feeling left out or feeling rejected here. Because some of you are dealing with, I mean, seven of swords and devil. Some of you are dealing with a very unhealthy dynamic or pattern. And that's exactly what this full moon in Virgo is highlighting for you. It's highlighting unhealthy habits where a specific area or for you partnerships that aren't serving you or it could be unhealthy patterns that both of you bring to the table or if you are single, it could be any self-sabotaging behavior or even limiting beliefs that hold you back that self-deceive you, right? Because you can see here that there's a snake. There's a snake in the grass somewhere in your energy and I feel like you're seeing the snake for what it is and you're cutting that snake off. You're cutting the head off the snake, right? With the death card and it's gonna help you release some heavy burdens. 
Now, where are you going, right? Where are you going? Even though it's not always an easy thing to go through this death period, this transformation, you are heading towards the star and the king of wands. Pisces, this is about you marching to the beat of your own drum. This star energy is about major healing. It comes after basically a tower, right? So when the star shows up here, this is Aquarian energy of inspiration, of hope, of not giving up on your dreams. Because some of you, there was a broken dream. Maybe you thought you were going to be in a relationship or in a job or you thought your, your mom was going to be around forever, right? I feel like there was a situation where your heart was shattered, okay? Even though I don't have any cup card he, cups here, I feel like you, you got to the point here where you just kind of cut, maybe cut something out because the feelings or emotions got a little bit heavy. But you are making a comeback here. There is big healing energy, and I feel with this King of Wands, this is you taking charge of your destiny. If this is career for you, some of you are leaders. You could be going out on your own. Maybe you're a business owner here, but you're very active. You're very passionate for what it is that you do and how you love as well. You love with everything in you, Pisces, when it comes to partnerships. And you want to heal. You don't want to give up. I feel like you don't want to throw in the bag. So for some of you, it has been difficult for you to choose some sort of an ending or to leave someone out in the cold because you are such a healer. You are very inspirational and someone gravitates towards your light and it could even be unhealthy at times because this devil and the seven of swords isn't a, a, a really awesome combination. It's icky, it's sticky, it's messy, it's toxic. It can be betraying, but you're letting that go with this 10 of wands and that's what this full moon is all about. So it's a big moon for you. And I feel between now and the next moon cycle, you're going to make some big choices. It's almost like it's almost like I'm getting that phrase. It's time to put on your big girl panties or your big boy panties, right? And step up to the plate here. Heal something. Move forward. Take action. Spirit, tell me a little bit more about the devil and the seven of swords. Because this is being illuminated. It's something very unhealthy. Something that you want to cut out. Okay. And focus on learning more about it. That's going to help you heal. Understanding Something at a root level is going to help you heal and move forward. Mastery of your craft. The more that you know, but in, not in an obsessive way. Don't, don't go crazy going obsessive, creeping on someone's you know, social media or digging to the intricate details of why someone betrayed you or did this. But it's more of maybe the psychology of it or learning about the human nature or maybe even learning about the different characteristics or the shadows that maybe a specific sign carry. So I feel like you're learning more about the human psyche, but I also see here focusing on your craft and what's best for you. So you focusing on staying in your own lane and discovering you know, what your passions are and what makes you truly happy, what brings excitement into your world, instead of maybe squashing your own talents or your own dreams, because you're weighing the world on your own shoulders of things that aren't even yours to carry. I hope that makes sense. Eight of Pentacles as your outcome is beautiful. It's about putting in your best effort, loving your work. It is putting effort into your self-development, maybe putting in uh, effort into healing, whatever this here is, getting better, learning about it, maybe learning more about nutrition, learning more about wealth, learning more about health. Diving in and putting your energy into something that is knowledgeable is going to help you move forward and help you march to the beat of your own drum. All right, Pisces, that is what I have for you. I hope this resonates with each and every one of you. If you like the messages here, please hit that thumbs up. It certainly helps get the divine channeled messages out there to those that need it most. And for a bigger picture, please check out your sun, your rising, and your moon sign. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who tuned in today. Lots of love.